everyone and welcome to this video about organizing quantitative data. In our previous video, we learned how to create a histogram and we were using the set of data which represented the ages of friends on Facebook. We're going to do the exact same thing. The only thing we're going to change in this uh, slide is that we are going to, instead of graphing regular frequency where we had 1, 4, 3, 0, 1, and 1, we're going to be graphing our relative frequency. Now notice again that we can express our relative frequency as a fraction, as a decimal, or a percent. So we're going to have to make a decision about which of these three we want to use to display on our graph. And it really doesn't matter. It's really up to you. I think I'm going to use percents just because I feel like percents are the easiest thing for our our minds or our brains to really sort of process and understand. And the only point of making a graph is to make data really easily accessible and understandable to human beings. Computers don't need graphs to understand data. People do. So let's get started. Again, we're going to go through the exact same process and we're going to use the exact same definition of histograms to follow the rules and to create this graph. So remember the horizontal scale has to represent the classes, which in this case is our age in years. So we need to make sure we label that. And then our Y axis represents our relative frequency. So again, everything's the same. The only thing is that I'm gonna write relative frequency instead of just frequency, not a really huge difference. Okay, remember we also need to get it, give this graph a meaningful title. So if you recall from previous lessons, these ages represent the ages of our Facebook friends. So I will write that down. And then we need to set about labeling our X and Y axes, or numbering them rather. So as you can see here, I tried really hard to take up all the space that I had. And so I used three tick marks for each group of 10. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing here because my x-axis is going to look exactly precisely the same as it did in the last slide. In fact, if I had been feeling even lazier, I could have just simply gone to this graph and I could have erased these y-axis labels and I could have simply replaced them with percents. It's kind of cheating, but it absolutely would have worked. Instead of a frequency of 1, I could have written 1 over 10, 4.1, or 10%. Likewise, I could have gone up to 20%, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 30%, and then remember at the top we have 40%. So believe it or not, that's exactly what we're doing. This is what our graph is gonna look like. And I'll do it together with you one more time because it also reinforces the concepts and the ideas that we use when we create histograms. All right, so again, we have 10% to 40%. And remember, like an artist who wants to fill his entire canvas or her entire canvas in not just a little corner, we want to use as many as much of this graph as we can. So one, two, three, four, five, this will be 10%. One, two, three, four, five, this will be 20%. One, two, three, four, five, 30%. And then 40% is all the way at the top. Okay, so again, use all the space you're given. Make sure all of your graph isn't just clumped in the bottom left hand corner. That's not what we want. All right, so now we can start drawing our bars. So remember one of the more potentially confusing rules when we're creating histograms is that our class, our first class goes from zero to nine, but our bar goes from zero to 10. And the reason is because these bars have to touch each other. They have to be adjacent. So this guy has to go all the way to the beginning of the next class or bin. So don't forget that. You don't want tiny little gaps in your histogram. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish drawing this quickly. 
So we have a 40, then we have a 30, then we have a gap here, and then again this goes up to 10, this goes up to 10, this goes up to 10. I apologize, this line tool seems to kind of want to make these lines not quite straight, I'm not really sure why. Okay, and remember, if you wanted to, you can kind of um, shade in these bars to, to make them more visibly, or make them more visible and apparent. Um, you can just kind of hash them in. So that's it. That's our relative frequency histogram. The other thing I wanted to talk about, I forgot to talk about in the other video, is why it's so important that all of these bars um, are adjacent or touch each other. And the reason is that when we do have gaps in our data, they are actually meaningful. They tell us something about the distribution of our data. So for example here, you can see that there is no bar from 30 to 40. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that we have no friends whose ages are between 30 and 39. So I guess I should really say data. Okay, and that's, that's something, right? Sometimes um, people will say the absence <laughs> of information or the absence of something is in itself information, okay? So that's why it's important that all of the other bars are touching each other. So you can see that there's no gap until we get to the space right here. And that's how you create a relative frequency histogram.